Congratulations to Steven for winning last week's giveaway. You just won some custom Silverado badges. These are on their way to you this morning, so they should be to you in a couple of days. And hopefully you have a Silverado to put these on, but either way, congrats. The pollen here is absolutely no joke. This car was parked outside for maybe half a day and it's absolutely covered in pollen. That is crazy. So I parked the Silverado outside for the time being. The Ram gets to park inside for the next couple of days because we do get a lot of pollen right now this time of year. According to the neighbors, for about five weeks out of the year, we get really bad pollen. So I parked the Silverado outside. We also have rain coming in the next day or two. So that'll get the truck nice and dirty. Then I can show you guys what it's like to wash a ceramic coated truck, which is gonna be really fun. I have the wheels coated, I have the roof coated, all the wraps coated, the plastics. That thing is going to just bead like crazy. So that'll be fun. But first things first, we're off to the post office. This is kind of why I don't prefer parking the trucks and the car in here at the same time. It's a little tight. I'm also giving away another set of the T15s from last week, guys. These things are like dumb bright. They cross-reference with a ton of part numbers. T15, 921, 912. W16W, I don't know. They cross reference with a ton of part numbers, but I know for sure they fit in the cargo lamps of my 2020 Ram, my 2012 Silverado, and I'm sure a bunch of other trucks, as well as reverse lights too on most cars and trucks. So yeah, I'll let you guys know at some point in today's video how you can win these as well. So we have a message on the screen saying P exclamation, oh, and rain, service rain scenting wipers with a P exclamation. Doesn't that normally mean parking brake, but that's not parking brake, because here, here's parking brake right here. Brake. That's the electronic parking brake, so the P, uh, I'm not too sure. And then service rain scenting wipers, hmm. I'm not too sure what that means, how to service a rain scenting wiper. Does that mean the wiper blades need replacing? I've used them twice. Don't think that's the case, but all right, uh, moving on. I have one goal every time I pull the truck out of the garage with the Z next to it that I can't even see. It's to not hit it, so gingerly, gingerly. So I'm hoping that that message or that little icon right there disappears after driving it around for a little bit because I haven't driven this truck in a minute. So hopefully after driving it around for the day that disappears, but welcome to the post office. So after doing a little research on this service rain sensing wipers form, it sounds like if there's nothing in the way of that sensor behind the mirror, on the windshield like a crack or a chip or some type of film, then it's a trip to the dealership. I really hope it's nothing to do with the replaced windshield because I did replace this windshield a little while back, but that message did just pop up on the screen at the same time as that parking symbol. So it's probably some type of computer reset thing. So hopefully, but I don't know, we'll see. And now let's ship out the Silverado badges. Look at how sick these things are. Matte black with red inserts. These things are gonna look sick on no matter what you put them on. You can put them on a Silverado, you can put them on a Ram. I don't care, they're gonna look pretty sweet. Don't put them on a Ram though. All right, Steven, your badges are on the way. We also got a package in the appeal box. I'm pretty sure I know exactly what's in there, which is pretty exciting. Let's get home. <laughs> So this is pretty exciting. I'm replacing all the ambient lights on the interior of the Ram in the doors, in the floors, and in the dash. Everything is getting replaced from that dull white to my color of choice from Paragoptics, blue. They have blue, they have green, they have white, and they also have red. And not only are these changing the colors, but they're also gonna be a lot brighter, which is gonna be really, really sick on the interior of this truck. I think the blue was the right move for me at least. Blue is kind of gonna match the Battleship gray wrap since gray is a little bit of a blue. There's definitely blue in this wrap, which I wasn't aware of when I chose Battleship gray, not thinking that gray is a, a watered down version of blue. So there's definitely blue in this wrap. Everyone that sees this wrap goes, whoa, I love it. It's so blue. And I'm like, it's gray, but sure, it's blue. So we have Paragoptics blue interior light kit. They say it's gonna take one to two hours to install all these lights, but there is a lot of work to do, though their instructions are pretty dynamic on everything. There's even photos, so this should be a breeze. The entire dashboard's coming apart. All the doors are coming apart. So we shall see. Let's get to it. So based off what I've seen in the photos so far, the Paragoptics are gonna be way, way brighter than these OEM ambiance. And what's cool too is if it ever becomes just overwhelming, 
you can still control it right here with the dimmer. So you don't lose that function whatsoever. There's still an option of them to be off, but I'm pretty excited. Let's get right to it and check out what's in the kit and see how much work we have cut out in front of us because it's gonna be quite a bit, but you know. So one major setback for a lot of us when it comes to doing really any kind of DIY project, especially when it comes to wiring stuff up and things like this, are the lack of detailed instructions which Paragoptics did not fall short on whatsoever. There's even a photo of the tools that you need to get the job done, which isn't much at all. Some plastic trim tools, 10 mil deep socket, electric impact, which I'm sure is optional, a T20 Torx, two pocket flathead screwdrivers, and a Phillips head. So here we have my deep socket 10 mil, the Phillips head, the flathead, the T20, and the plastic trim removal tools. I'm not using any power tools because well, I'm, a, I'm an alpha and I don't need those. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, my impact just doesn't work anymore. So I'm gonna start with the back left door. First step is this door and this little door right here need to come off. Flathead screwdriver right there in the top, there's a little opening, just jam it in there and pry it on out. Pretty easy. That exposes two 10 mil bolts. Oh my bad, there's actually two down here, so there's three total. So this is where the plastic trim tool comes into play. I'm gonna slide it right behind the door panel. So after all the clips are out, it's time to just remove these cables, starting with this one right here. This one's really easy. I'm just gonna pop it out of that retainer and then I'm gonna slide it out from the top. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna remove that link for the door handle. It's a lot easier to pinch it with needle nose pliers. That way, you can slide it on out just like that and then just unhook it easy. Then there's this wire right here that simply unclips right here, super easy. And there's one more in here. I'm going in blind on it. Yep, bam, just like that. We're free. So first thing I'll do is disconnect this guy right here, take my T20 and then loosen that screw right. Oh, oh. So here's what this looks like. This needs to be taken apart. So there was three release tabs right there. That's this guy right here. So I've opened this thing up and now it's time to remove the old LED and then replace it with the new one. Let's carefully remove the stock LED board without breaking something. Oh, all right. All right, time for the new light. And we're gonna be very careful with those prongs right there because I'm sure they're delicate. Also, check this out. Each chip is labeled. It says right there, DT middle pocket. I mean, come on now. And it even has a blue dot right there, symbolizing what color the light is. Now I just need to line up those prongs with those little holes right there. So I just came to the realization there's actually three lights in each back door as well. So aside from the one I just replaced right there, there's one down here and there's one right up in here as well. I didn't even realize that. They're so dull. But yes, three lights in each back door. For that bottom light, I'm gonna remove that Torx 20 right there and pull this guy out. So the lower part of the door is called the map pocket light. Slide it right in there, close the door. Just like that. Assembly that holds the light that lights up the door handle cup is just clipped in there. Just like that. So on this one, there's three little release tabs on one side and then two on the other. You just gotta get up in there and then start lifting from the edge. this wiring harness back into the switch unless you pull the switch out, which is really easy. Just pull it out, it's super simple. Reattach the wiring assembly to it and then just push it right back in, boom. And 
And since we're in the area, I may as well work on the light under the driver's seat. This one just slides like that. Easy. Footwell LED, everything is so nicely labeled. We are cruising. Slide that guy back on right there. You can't see too well, but this thing slides right back on just like that. Alright, we are moving along. So now it's time to do the driver and passenger side door, then everything up front. So we'll see how that goes. But so far we're on track for this being about a two hour installation. I took a food break. Aside from that, we're cruising. And same as the rear, three 10 mil bolts. Time to pry off the door panel. Let's go. The lock just slides right out, super easy. Then the rest is just clips. So it's a lot easier to push out the window switch and then unplug it that way. Just because there's no room back there to maneuver the wiring harness out of. So now with my needle nose pliers, I'm gonna pinch those two clips right there that are attached to the cable that pulls the door handle. Pinch them and I can pull it right through and just like that, attach the cable. That pulls the handle and we are free and clear. So the front door panel is almost identical on the back side to the rear doors. We have one here, we have one there, and we also have one here as well. Take my T20 to this one right here, remove the cable, and then disconnect it from that little tubular thing right there. And then same with the middle one, one screw holding it in. Uh, one handed. And this one up top is super easy. Just remove the wiring harness, and then there's two clips. If I can do it with one hand, I'm sure I can. Oh, like that. This one's cool because it has a white and a blue light. So you still get a bunch of light output down there. All right, so now I gotta remove this thing right here. Um, it seems kind of straightforward actually. So up here, this rubber cover, take that out. And then that exposes two Phillips heads. So let's get those out. And then I guess the whole thing just unclips. One, okay. Um, <laughs> Well, let's see. Uh, oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't like this. Okay, then there's this to, what is that for? Oh, yeah, the cigarette lighter. So disconnect the cigarette lighter. Oh, there's a little tab in there. Okay, so we'll poke that little tab. There we go. Another wiring harness down there. Oh, one more. So two of those. Oh, one more, two more. Little tab right there, hit that and that releases it, and wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Upper glove box LED housing removal. Disconnect the wiring harness connector from the upper glove box LED housing. Disengage the tab securing the upper glove box LED housing to the instrument panel. Rotate the housing 90 degrees and remove the housing. There we go. 90 degrees and start pulling. So now this goes right into that tube thing like that and then secure it into place like so and then reconnect. That's it. The final two lights, one right here above the start and stop button and there's one right here as well. So disengage the two tabs, securing the right side dash LED housing to the instrument panel. Okay, that was actually really easy. So. It goes in like this. There's one tab below it to my right side. 
you just press that down and that releases the bottom and then you just have to get it off the post. So you slide it off the post. If you pull too much this way, it kind of angles it and it, it won't slide. So keep it straight and pull it straight out and it comes right out. Just don't drop it in there. So that's this one. Now the left side, let's figure out that one. The plastic trim stick or equivalent, depress each indicated tab. Okay, so there's six tabs on that vent. It amazes me how easy these expensive cars come apart. Okay, and just like that. Let's make sure these are identical so we don't mix them up. Yep, they are the exact same thing. Okay, I'm gonna plug, I'm gonna plug it in first this time. Wow, that just clips right in there. Just like that. It says right here, number two, carefully disconnect the wire harness connector from the right side dash LED housing without <laughs> dropping it behind the instrument panel. This has happened to us before and it is not fun <laughs> trying to retrieve it. That is too funny, that just happened to me. I still think it's so funny how they put in the instructions. This happened to us <laughs> and it's not fun fishing it out. Luckily for me, it fell all the way through to the floor, but I can imagine that being not very fun if it were to really get lost back there. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, that is so sick. Wow, wow. That is really bright down there. What's cool too is there's also a white light down there still as well. So when you open the doors, there's also a white LED right there on the Paragoptic system. That is pretty sweet. Set theme, yes. We have red, orange, a lighter orange, red and blue. Wait, what's, oh, Rebel and red are the same thing, aren't they? Oh, I get it. Carbon fiber and non-carbon. Okay. Well, blue. That is the move for sure. Oh, it's so sick. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wow, I feel really cool right now. This is uh this is a vibe for sure. Calls for a little celebration. Oh. And just like that. Quarter tank of gas, gone. That was actually incredibly weak. This truck sucks for burnout. I guess the ESC is always on no matter what. So traction being off makes absolutely no difference at all. It's useless. That button's for show. I apologize in advance. That beeping sound is not gonna stop anytime soon. But yeah, these lights are absolutely game changers. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm almost positive that Paric Optics is the only company that makes replacement ambient lights for the interior of your fifth gen Ram. Now let's do a little range test here. See how far back we can get some light output from these things. Okay, okay, I see it still, I see it still. Those are definitely some bright boys down there for sure. And considering they're blue, blue is not the brightest light in the book of colors. I think green probably be a little bit brighter. Obviously white would be a lot brighter than all four options. Red and blue probably are on the same level playing field as far as brightnesses go, but yeah, that's pretty bright for an ambient light, given the fact that it's an ambient light, not, you know, like a map or a dome light. It's a courtesy light, so they're not designed to be super bright, but these are definitely a lot brighter than the factory OEM little white lights in there. What's cool too is your dimmer still works. You can turn the dimmer all the way down. You can turn it all the way up. So if your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your friends hop in the truck and they're just like, nah, I'm not feeling the blue. I'm not feeling red. I'm not feeling the green. That white is way too bright. It's all good. Turn it right down and you're good to go. Mine's never, mine's staying that way, but you know, it's there if you need it. Let's hop in the back here and get a view from the back seat. Oh my gosh, what? I've never sat back here before. Dang, the leg room back here is, oh my gosh. I'm six foot, I'm back here chilling, basically fully reclined, what? Anyways, yes, these lights though. This, back here, this is the view. Wow, what a vibe. So sick. Entering to win these T15s from Last Fit is super easy. All you guys have to do is comment on this video, then head over to my Instagram page at Mark underscore Brenner and comment the exact same thing on the most recent Instagram photo, the year, the make, and the model of what you drive. I'm curious what you guys have. Drop a comment on this video, head on over to the Instagram page, comment the exact same thing. Then I will announce a winner on Sunday, March 14th at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time via my Instagram story. So watch out for that. All the doors 
are pretty much the exact same on the inside and removing them as well. So once you figure out one door, you'll have every other door in the bag, no problems at all. So this was really easy. I read half the instructions on maybe one door and the rest was self-explanatory except for the dash part. But even that was super, super simple. Huge shout out to Paragoptics. You guys made an amazing product on behalf of the fifth gen Ram Nation. We thank you guys for that. But that is all I have for you guys today. I'll have all the Paragoptics information linked below. I will catch you guys on the next one. Till then, peace out.